All right, so good day, everyone, and welcome to Singapore. Thank you all for joining me here uh, in this beautiful park that we have in northern Singapore. Uh, if any of you have been on any of my other tours, you'll know that we are in Sembawang, uh, North Singapore, and I'll tell you more about that after my introduction. So. My name is Imran and I will be your host today. And uh, if you had joined the earlier edition of this tour, uh, you'll find a slight difference because today I'm actually starting from the waterfront and working back through the park to the entrance. So uh, <clears throat> I'm a guide here in Singapore. However, uh, this is uh, my second life, so to speak. Uh, prior to this, uh, I was involved with the banking for over 20 years uh, and I had the privilege and luxury of living in different parts of the world. But Singapore is home and has been since 1997. Most of you probably when you think of Singapore, you are thinking of a concrete jungle. And yeah, it is a concrete jungle. I think if any of you have been on my local Not Crazy Rich Asians tour, you'll know that basically uh, it's all about uh, living in apartments and tall buildings. But Singapore aspires to be a city in a garden. And this is one of those efforts to do that. What do I mean by city in a garden? Well, we want to make sure that every resident of Singapore, and there are 5.4 million people here in Singapore on a very tiny island. So uh, we are one of the most densely populated cities in the world too. Uh, however, when you are in a place like this, you forget about it. So the idea is that by 2030, every resident of Singapore should be within a seven to 10 minute walk of a reasonably sized green space. As I think all of us will agree, greenery, parks, they enhance our mental well-being. They have a calming effect on us uh, and just generally uh, pretty to look at, right? Especially when you have flowers in bloom. We were lucky on the last tour of this park, we saw some cannonball tree flowers and hopefully we'll see some more today, but uh, uh, we'll have to wait to see. Now, uh, this park, Sembawang Park, uh, is not a very big park. It's actually quite small. It's about 15 hectares, which puts it in the size of approximately 28 soccer pitches or soccer fields. Uh, and that's what we'll be walking through. So it's 7.30 in the morning over here in Singapore. It's 84 degrees, but as Google will tell you, it feels like 93 because humidity is up at 70%. And <clears throat> if you joined my uh, stream early, uh, I started it about 15 minutes early, in fact, as early as I could, uh, to show you some of the views that are behind me. and. Uh, so let's begin uh, with our walkabout and I'm not going to talk a lot during the walkabout but please uh, let's have this as a conversation so that uh, you can ask questions, make comments, whatever you like. Uh, I'll be happy to address them from time to time but uh, let's also enjoy the scenery. So Katie you're absolutely right about that. Uh, uh, the impact of green, I think in many ways, it really can't even be quantified. So let me uh, turn the camera around and start to pan for you. Uh, so what we are seeing here is a shipyard, Sembawang shipyard. Sembawang, the neighborhood, was very much a, a part of the colonial era's defenses against a Japanese invasion. They built a the British built a naval base here, uh, and <clears throat> I'm going to put up a slide about that. That naval base has been converted, or part of it has been converted into a shipyard, and the remainder is indeed the park that we are going to walk around. So the large part of the naval base has become the park. A small part of it has become that shipyard and port. It is a port also. 
operated by the Port of Singapore Authority. And I'm panning around because some of you might even see some, uh, <clears throat> some floats in the water. That is because this area is very popular also on the weekends as a beach. And that separates uh, the, uh, well, it basically stops you from going into the deep water. But also on the other side of this view is Malaysia. Where exactly are we? So you can see we are right there. This is it's Malaysia's couple of kilometers away. And this area is normally patrolled quite regularly by the Coast Guard to stop uh, people from crossing the border illegally both ways. So, and now, of course, Singapore, a little red dot in Southeast Asia. Let me show you how little it is. And I will also uh, show you where we are as far as public transport is concerned with Sembawang, right at the northern tip. So let's begin. Uh, you can see we even have some uh, banyan, banyan trees over here, uh, people walking around. Uh, and up ahead, over uh, uh, behind the sign up there, you can probably even see some uh, some coastline or waterfront properties. Very, very expensive. A far cry from the public housing that I do show you on my Not Crazy Rich Asian tours. But these are big, big houses, uh, generally six rooms and above. And that means that they are nice places for multi-generational families. Uh, they will cost you, set you back about four million US dollars. So not anything cheap or not anything that uh, we can just uh, buy on a whim. So here we are. Let's begin our walk. And so we are, we've got the water on our right and the park is on our left. We have a little compass over here and that shows you the beach that we have just seen, the Wak Hassan Beach. And what we will be doing is walking. And so you see the marking for north over here. We will be walking towards the jetty and Bolio House. All right, so let's carry on. And on the right, you can see a staircase that takes us down to the beach. And in case you want to use the beach, the water is tested on a weekly basis. I'm not exactly sure what enterococcus is, but it seems like it's something to measure the hygiene uh, of the water. And another warning sign for us about jellyfish. So as it starts to become closer to a uh, breakfast time, people are out walking their dogs uh, and even jogging, running. Maybe a postcard for some of you.
it is so peaceful here, Judy and Allison. Uh, I am really enjoying these morning walks. And I have just spotted a cannonball tree flower. And I think, was it you, Katie, who missed it uh, on the last walk or someone missed it? I'm going to go up and take, give you a closer look because just in case we don't have these flowers blooming on the other side of the park, I do want you to see them. And some of you might notice the cannonball itself on the right, which is where the tree gets its name from. And these, of course, <coughs> are the buds before the flower has bloomed. Uh, Powell, we, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we checked this on the last tour, not by humans, but it is used as feedstock for certain animals. All right, I'm going to give you a vertical shot here as well, just in case. So let me take it vertical in one, two, three. And let's go back to horizontal in one, two, three. All right. So that is the... And <clears throat> the interesting thing about this tree, and I'm going to show you the cannonball now. This is where it gets its name from. Don't ask me the formal scientific genus name, but when this cannonball drops to the ground, it really makes a noise like an explosion. And that's another reason why this tree is called the cannonball tree. All right, so let us get back on our trail. See what else we find. So this is the Straits of Johor overlooking Malaysia. Johor is the name of the province in Malaysia that Singapore neighbors. It's a very, very popular destination for Singaporeans to go and holiday, spend the day. In fact, <clears throat> we have school holidays here these days and this last weekend, the uh, the uh, entry point into, there are two entry points by road. The entry point was so busy that there were traffic jams up to five or six hours uh, it would take you to cross. The sun is breaking out on over there. The clouds are disappearing or subsiding, perhaps.
<clears throat> now I am heading into an area where sometimes there is a dead zone for signals. If it disconnects or the signal deteriorates, please hang in there. I will walk to a place, location where the signal improves. Maybe we'll just take a walk out to Bolio Jetty. Part of the dead zone. So do I have everyone back? I apologize, we were in that dead zone again. So I'm just backtracking a little because uh, that dead zone is obviously still there. And the beach that you are seeing here, there is kayaking that takes place over here. You can rent canoes and kayaks here are used doing some of those water sports as well. So... We'll climb up here, walk past this beautiful old banyan tree. I would have liked to take you closer to that house over there, but that is in the dead zone. Uh, but I will walk a little bit closer. That house is Bolio House. It was built in the early 1900s as basically a holiday home for a wealthy merchant. And it later on was taken over by the... British Naval Admiralty. And the jetty was built there. Remember the big naval base around here? Uh, so this was taken over by the British Naval Admiralty. And they used it as living quarters for a senior officer. <clears throat> The naval base was built in the 1930s. The structure that you see in front of you that's it. Those are the toilets, even shower facilities. So hope everyone are, is enjoying these views. 
beautiful green space in the middle of a concrete jungle. Some beautiful plumeria flowers. Let me pick one up, show it to you. From this tree here. And once again, all right, enough of the flower. Uh, here we have some barbecue pits as well. So you can <clears throat> enjoy. Yes, yeah, frangipani, that's right, Pam. You hear an alarm going off in the background. There seems to be a testing of an alarm. Now, perhaps uh, I'm not such a big nature buff, but uh, this is a beautiful tree. I'm gonna go vertical for you in one, two, three. Uh, I, maybe someone can share with us the name of this tree because I'm not really familiar with it. Nature, I enjoy seeing it, but I'm not a botanist by any means. And always happy to learn from the participants. All right, so I'll go back to horizontal in one, two, three. You can see there's no camping here or no glamping even. Yeah, I wish I knew uh, what it was called. I'm going to try and find out uh, what it is called next time. Uh, definitely tropical. I think the ones behind it, and I'm going to pan back towards it, uh, are uh, tropical palms. You can see these ones here. I think these are ornamental trees, tropical palms. Yes, I think it's called a fan palm, uh, Lori. I think that is the popular name for it. It takes me back to my tour guide course. We have to take a course here in Singapore to become a tour guide. Uh, and the module that uh, I was most afraid of was the nature module because for the life of me, I can't really remember uh, the names of different trees and plants. Uh, and <clears throat> some people can just look at the leaf and look at uh, <clears throat> the bark uh, and immediately they'll know what it is. But uh, in my case, uh, I'm a little bit slow there. So I was hoping when we had our practical exam that I wouldn't end up with a nature uh, practical module. And as luck would have it, I didn't. So we are walking towards a children's playground. 
Yes, you're right. I was relieved. Uh, children's playground here in the park. And what you will notice is that it is built and constructed in a way to reflect the heritage of the area. Remember, this entire area was part of the colonial naval base. So what we will see is a ship structure at the heart of this park. We'll walk in. So can you see the big beginning of the outlines of a ship here with its two smokestacks? So when we want to become kids again, we go and play in the sandbox, right? Uh, uh, Laurie, you could be right. I'm not exactly certain. about the swing set being a whale eight. It's certainly a unusual design for a swing set. I think it's probably more like a wave because we don't have whales in uh, this part of the world. Thank you very much, Pam. Tips are always appreciated from, uh, from you, from everyone. Uh, they do help me to put up more content on through the platform. We have a little fitness corner coming up. It was a little bit busier when I first arrived, but I guess as the sun comes out and it gets hotter, but it's still relatively busy. And if you've been on my Not Crazy Rich tour, or Not Crazy Rich Asians tour, you'll know that these sort of fitness corners are also very prevalent in most public housing neighborhoods. This one perhaps is uh, people use uh, because maybe it will also uh, give you a, a little bit of a communal feel and being in a park. <clears throat> One thing you might notice is the number of elderly seniors in uh, these places. And Singapore has one as one of its main challenges, the graying of the population. So we already have something like 40%, I think it's 35% of the population is over 65. And of course, these numbers are going to uh, get even worse, or I should say get even larger. Uh, and that is uh, a societal shift, a demographic shift. Let me pan back and show you where we've come from. So another set of toilets with washing, showers, etc. So this is where we have come from. The Bolio house uh, is straight up ahead. And on its left will be uh, the Sembawang shipyard. Okay. 
and the beach where we started from will be basically right about here if we were to just walk through beyond that small car park. So we will be taking a right here and heading down this path. It's a beautiful wide trunk tree all covered in leaves over here. Let me see if we get a better shot vertically. Let me take it vertical in one, two, three. Hear the sirens again. Probably a safety warning from the shipyard. So I'll go horizontal again. One, two, three. Uh, Katie, this would be about two and a half kilometers or so from my house. Uh, it's walkable if you do it as part of an exercise uh, uh, routine uh, or definitely on a cycle, uh, but you can also take a, a direct bus here. I have a close, uh, another larger green area, which is only about five, six hundred meters from my place. Uh, when I say larger, I don't mean larger than this. What I mean is larger than the, uh, the one that you see behind uh, my apartment where all the exercise, the running track is, uh, bigger than that. see a beautiful very very large banyan tree the background over there behind that we'll go and take a closer look as well So if you have sharp eyes, you might be able to spot the cannonballs on the tree behind this tree back here. And this is the tree where we, one of the trees where we spotted all, a lot of the flowers the last time on my last walk through the park. You can see we don't have any flowers here today. We have one lone flower up ahead on this tree.
and you should be able to spot the very, very unique banyan tree behind here. And I'll give you a vertical here as well. So I'll go vertical in one, two, three. How's that? All right, um, I'll go back to horizontal in one, two, three. And maybe we'll take a closer look at this tree. Show you some of the intricate branches or trunks luckily no real trash lying around either which is a good thing See a few people doing some exercising back there, <clears throat> including maybe breathing exercises. Give you a wider view. And here's the tree again. So we'll head down the path. Absolutely, banyan tree. And looks like a very old one as well. Wow, I'm, I'm sure there must be, uh, Lori. Uh, I know Hawaii also has some beautiful orchids. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to take all of you through the National Orchid Gardens here in Singapore. Where we have some beautiful orchids. Our national flower is also an orchid. And if you see these letters on the path here, PCN,
That stands for Park Connector Network. Uh, we have a network of park connectors that essentially go around the entire island. The park connectors are designed for joggers, pedestrians, bicyclists, etc. Uh, basically, uh, as a network around the entire island. When showing off their football skills. Watch this gentleman do his morning routine. Might make a decent postcard for some. And I'll take it vertical as well in case you want it vertically in one, two, three. All right, I think I'd better leave before he gets upset. So go horizontal again in one, two, three. Well, we're coming up to the uh, end of our tour. I do want to show you one plaque or board over here in case any of you uh, are interested in taking a photograph and getting some of the names of the different flora that we have seen. And keep it for your records. And show you this beautiful garden above it. Very, very dense green. Those huge leaves on the left over there. All right, folks. Thank you very much, Lori. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining me this for this morning walk uh, through this beautiful park here in northern Singapore. I hope that you found it a peaceful, relaxing tour, uh, not as information heavy as most of my uh, tours tend to be. 
I try to control myself and not talk, talk too much. Uh, as you know, that can if you have joined any of my earlier tours, you know I enjoy talking. So uh, I did uh, curb my instincts there. Uh, and it's nice to just see the greenery, the sea, the Straits of Johor, and of course, uh, know how close we are to Malaysia. I'm going to put up one final uh, slide. So in case any of you are interested in connecting with me offline, you can do so uh, using my contact details over there. So have a great evening, everyone. Have a great day, a great morning, depending on where you are signing in from. And look out for my next tour, which is a new one. Uh, it's coming in one week. Uh, and it is a walk down Singapore's main shopping street, so uh, called Orchard Road. It is a, a, a major destination for tourists. And in case you are planning to visit Singapore, you will probably end up spending at least a morning or an afternoon, afternoon on Orchard Road. So it might give you a sneak preview as to what uh, is in store for you in case you come over here. Uh, Katie, you mentioned a hundred postcards of that banyan tree. Wow. Uh, I think I need to learn how to uh, uh, make these trees more photogenic so I can perhaps get you and others uh, to start taking more uh, postcards. But either way, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a pleasure for me to walk around here with you. Uh, and uh, I am going to sign off. If you can leave a tip, please do. Thank you for those who already have. Uh, it is highly appreciated, always helps to uh, uh, us guides in putting out more content on the platform. If you can't and you enjoyed the tour, please leave a review or a rating when you can. All right, so this is Imran here from Singapore uh, signing off uh, on a early, well, it's no longer early, in the morning. All right, so thank you again. See you all soon. Bye-bye.